After an election, a political party has the votes of 24% of the people that voted in the election. Now here, I'm representing all those people by this set. Each dot is a person who voted in this election. A red dot represents a person who voted for this particular party. Um, the proportion of red dots in here is 24%. So that proportion is represented by the letter P. Okay, so P is the population proportion. Now usually P is unknown. Obviously in the run-up to this election, we are not going to know what P is. That's the true proportion of people that voted for this party. But we could consider estimates of P by taking uh, simple random samples of this population. Okay, it might not be feasible to count everybody in this population because, you know, there could be one, hundreds of thousands or millions of people who voted in an election. So we imagine taking a simple random sample. Okay, so let's suppose we take out a sample of size 1000. We let little n stand for the sample size. So let's suppose that we estimate P. Now an estimate of P is denoted by P hat. So what we would do is, okay, we would count the number of red dots, if you like, from our sample of size 1000. So that's the number of people who voted for this particular party. Let's suppose that we found that 229 of them voted for this party. Well, if we work this out, the estimate for the population proportion p hat is 0.229. Now, obviously we're not going to get 24% each time, but we would expect to get a value for p hat that's in or around 24%. Now, imagine that we replace this sample of size 1000 and pick out another sample of size 1000. So, you know, the no that other sample may not involve these values, or it may involve, we might have some overlap. So we take out another sample of 1000, and um, we calculate a different value for p hat. So this time, for example, um, you know, we might get, say, 257 people who voted for this particular party out of 1000 gives us a proportion of 0.257. So, we do this process indefinitely. We're sampling with replacement. Okay, so let's pretend that we have all these estimates, p hat of the unknown population proportion p, and uh, we indicate them along this horizontal line. As we might expect, a lot of them will be in or around p. Okay, pretend that you don't know what p is, even though given a value here for it. It can be shown that the distribution of the p-hats is approximately normal, with mean equal to the unknown population proportion. The mean is normally denoted by mu, of course, for a normal distribution. And sigma, the standard deviation, is given by this here. Now, as an aside, I should briefly mention that this approximation to a normal distribution gets better as n gets bigger, okay, if we take bigger sample sizes. Um, we also get a good approximation if p, the unknown population proportion, is not close to 0 or 1. Now we've seen before that for a normal distribution about 95% of the values lie be within two standard deviations of the mean. So about 95% of all the p hats lie between here and here. That means that this area is 95% or 0.95. Okay, the area gives us the proportion of values between any two points. Well, to be more accurate, this 2 should be 1.96. We should say that 95% of all the values of a normal distribution lie within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean, but we are going to round 1.96 to 2. Okay, so I've written that state, I've written what I said in words, um, of course we can write it down mathematically, the probability that um, 
p hat lies between this value and this value here is 0.95. Well, we know if that if it's a perfect normal distribution, then this is actually more than 0.95, okay? Because we've rounded from 1.96 up to 2. So the one P plus 1.96 sigma would be a little bit um, less than this value, and P minus 1.96 would be a little bit more, okay? So in reality, it's a bit more than 0.95, but we're just going to round to that. Okay, we can turn this around. So... If p hat is within two sigma standard deviations of p, it means that p, the unknown population proportion, is within two sigma standard deviations of p hat. So we've seen this kind of thing before, um, as I've explained before, you know, if, if one person is standing within, say, two meters of another person, then that person is standing within two meters of the first person. We can also prove this mathematically, actually, uh, so as a brief aside, I'll just run through that. So briefly what we do is we take this inequality in here and subtract p and p hat from all three terms. So I'll just write out this inequality. So if we subtract p from the first term, it'll cancel out this p and subtract p hat. So we get, um, okay, I'll write the minus p hat minus 2 sigma less than and uh, we subtract p and p hat from this term we get rid of the p hat and we're left with minus p in the middle and subtract p and p hat from the last term if we subtract p we get rid of the p subtract p hat okay so basically i'm just taking this expression here and just adding it to the three terms in this inequality so we end up with this okay so i haven't changed this inequality and the last step is to take this inequality in here and multiply all three terms by minus 1. So the first term becomes p hat plus 2 sigma. Uh, this term becomes p. That's what we want. We want p in the middle. And the last term becomes p hat minus 2 sigma. So I'm just just uh, multiplying all this equality by minus 1. And that changes the direction of the inequality. Now we can turn this around, of course. We can write this thing first, less than p, and p in turn is less than this here. So that's exactly what we have up here. Okay, so now we found a 95% confidence interval for p. Okay, it comes from these two terms here. So the probability is 0.95 that the unknown population proportion P lies between P hat minus 2 sigma and P hat plus 2 sigma. Okay, um, 2 sigma is called the margin of error for P. So if we put P hat at the center of this interval, this is P hat plus 2 sigma, or P hat plus the margin of error, and here we have p hat minus the margin of error. Okay, here's our 95% confidence interval. So um, p is somewhere in here. Okay, so this is the margin of error, which is the <coughs> uh, maximum distance that our unknown population proportion p could be from our sample proportion p hat. So we just take a single sample and calculate p hat and uh, you know we can then just get the two sigma. The two sigma of course is this distance here which of course is the same as this, dist this distance here. So what about two sigma? Well we saw a formula for sigma earlier. Okay we showed this without proof. We can greatly simplify this, actually, as we'll soon see. Um, so we multiply 2 by it. But you can see a big problem with this formula. It involves P. So we need P to calculate it. But if we need P, then we don't need to get a 95% confidence interval or the margin of error for P. Because if we know what P is, we're done. Okay. The, the point is, is that we do not know what P is. So this may be the correct margin of error, but it's... It's obviously useless to us, because if we know P, well, we don't need to do any of this stuff. So what is done is we replace P with its estimate, P hat. We do know what P hat is. That comes from our single sample. 
So that's why we have just approximately equals here. Okay, so we get our sample, calculate p hat, n is the sample size, and uh, we're done. We have our margin of error for p. However, we can have a much more simpler version of this actually. It turns out that this thing here can be approximated by 1 over root n, and I'll explain why that is so later. So if we use 1 over root n, then we don't have to plug in for p hat. So let's do a quick example. Let's use this value here for our p hat. Okay, so again, we pretend we don't know what p is. I've written down it as 0.24. Okay, so with this, this is our estimate of p. Um, let's get the margin of error, so we just plug in 0.229 into this formula. Or alternatively, we can just work out 1 over root n where n is a thousand. Okay, so here are here are two values for the 95% margin er of error. The 1 over root n value is always going to be at least equal to this more accurate value actually. This is the more accurate value. Okay, let's write down the 95% confidence interval for p. Well, here I have it. Um, p hat is 0.229. So we subtract the margin of error. Now I'm going to use this margin of error here. And we take our estimate p hat and add on this margin of error. Right, so there we have it. So the probability is 95% that p lies between these two values. Well, we happen to know what p is. We happen to know that p is 0.24, and as you can see, it does indeed lie between those two values. But if we don't know what p is, we can say that 95% um, of the time, p will lie between these two values. Okay. So here are our two margin of error formulas. Well, they are 95% margin of error formulas for the population proportion p. Since this one is bigger, well, it's a more conservative estimate. So this gives us more than 95% confidence. Now, as an aside, I want to briefly mention how this simpler form of the margin of error comes from this more complicated form. To do this, we consider this quantity inside the square root sign. Now p hat is a number running from 0 to 1. Okay, it's, it's an estimate of a probability, and a probability cannot be greater than 1, so actually there's no point in showing all of that. Um, so we graph it, we draw the graph of this thing. Well, this is just a quadratic it's uh, p hat minus p hat squared. So it's just a graph of a quadratic function. It's quite straightforward to work out. Since the square term is negative, you see that we have an inverted parabola. Um, you know, it has to pass through 0 and 1. When p hat is 0, this is 0. When p hat is 1, this quantity is 0. Now let's consider the maximum value that this quadratic can have. Well, we could do some calculus to work this out, but it's quite easy to see that the maximum value occurs at this value here. By symmetry, this value here is a half. Now, this value is not important. The value of p hat equals a half gives us the maximum value for this expression. Um, so if we plug a half into this thing, we get a half minus a half squared. Well, that's a half minus a quarter, which is a quarter. Okay, so we are interested in taking the maximum possible value of this quantity. So we have the maximum margin of error uh, and the most conservative estimate. Okay, so we just plug a quarter into this thing here. So we have the square root of a quarter, which is a half. Two times a half is one. 
So we end up at 1 over root n, this simpler formula for the 95% ma margin of error of a population proportion.